Welcome to the October 11th Traffic Committee meeting. I'm going to go ahead and call this to order at 3.07 p.m. Uh, so first I'm going to go ahead and have the members introduce themselves. We can just start, let's write that in. Uh, Corporal Adam Seichner, West Covina PD Traffic Bureau. Jana Robbins, West Covina Traffic Department. Uh, Allison Richter, West Covina Traffic Department. Brian Cervantes, West Covina Traffic Department. John Osque, <coughs> City of West Covina Engineering. And we'll go ahead and uh, the last uh, meeting, we went ahead and approved two items. The two items were the traffic review on Roland Avenue between Vincent Avenue to Lark Ellen Avenue, and the traffic review on California Avenue between Service Avenue to West Covina Parkway. And these items will be uh, presented to the city council at, at a later time for final approval and for installation. So the next item on the agenda is going to be the new traffic committee items. Uh, for the first one, it's going to be the traffic review of Dernish Street between Sunset Avenue and California Avenue. There we go. Okay, so this, uh, we received a resident request to evaluate the existing conditions along the segment. Uh, the resident reported that vehicles tend to speed through the segment and it is located near a school zone with pedestrian activity. Uh, the resident additionally requested that the city evalu evaluate the potential installation of speed humps or other traffic calming measures to slow traffic and enhance pedestrian safety. Uh, as part of this review, we included an analysis of the existing roadway conditions, a review of approximately three years of available collision data, an average daily traffic count or ADT, a 24-hour speed survey, and an examination of existing field conditions. So as part of the existing conditions on Dernish Street, the speed limit is 25 miles per hour and the street is approximately 39.5 feet wide with one lane in each direction and no marked center line. Uh, Dernish Street is traffic signal controlled at Sunset Avenue and stop controlled at Evanwood Avenue and California Avenue with a marked crosswalk when approaching from the west. For Sunset Avenue, the speed limit is 40 miles per hour and is approximately 81 feet wide with two lanes in each direction and a marked bike lane. Sunset Avenue has a center median divider when approaching from the south and a double yellow center line when approaching from the north. Uh, for Broadmoor Avenue, there is a prima facie speed of 25 miles per hour. As it approaches Dernest Street, Broadmoor Avenue is approximately 39.5 feet wide with one lane in each direction and no marked center line. And for Evanwood, uh, it also has a prima facie speed of 25 miles per hour and is approximately 39.5 feet wide with one lane in each direction and Evanwood Avenue stop controlled at Dernest Street. For California Avenue, the speed limit is 35 miles per hour heading northbound and 24 mi 25 miles per hour in a school zone heading southbound from Dernest Street. California Avenue is approximately 39.5 feet wide with one lane in each direction and a yellow dash center line. And as you can see, those are the current existing conditions of the street as far as signage goes. So collision history analysis was conducted along the segment uh, from Dernest uh, Street from Sunset Avenue to California Avenue. Uh, this collision history was conducted over a three-year period between August of 2019 to the most recent available collision data in July of 2022. And in the three years, there were seven collisions as seen. Oh, it's not on there. Okay, so seven collisions in that three-year collision history. Uh, we additionally did take average daily traffic or ADT counts. Uh, counts were taken on September 28, 2021, uh, when schools were back to in-person learning. Uh, during these counts, it was shown that uh, the segment of Dernish Street carries a total of 1,337 vehicles per day. We additionally did a speed survey. Uh, the speed samples were taken over a 24-hour period and was surveyed on September 28, 2021. Based on this 24-hour uh, speed survey, the 85th percentile speed of the vehicles surveyed along Dernest Street was determined to be 33 miles per hour. It was noted during the speed survey that most of the vehicles traveling more than 25 miles per hour were documented between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. Uh, and on the, for the speed hump evaluation, the initial request was for speed humps on this segment. Uh, at this time, the segment is not suitable for speed humps. Uh, 
just be, or since it does not meet the requirement of 1,200 feet minimum length uninterrupted by stop signs. In this segment, uh, Durness Street has a maximum of 1,038 feet uninterrupted by stop signs. Durness additionally has a maximum critical speed of 33 miles per hour when the min minimum critical speed requirement is 35 miles per hour. From the review, we can up with the following recommendations. Add a 25 pavement legend. Uh, refresh and repaint the existing yellow crosswalk. Refresh existing stop pavement legend at Durness Street and California Avenue. Install red reflective strips beneath existing stop signs. Install cross traffic does not stop plaque on existing stop sign posts. And as another note, the intersection of Durness Avenue at Evanwood was addressed under a separate report. Uh, improvements include refresh all pavement striping, update crosswalk to yellow ladder, and add red reflective posts to stop signs. Okay, do we have any discussion on this item? Basically, this one had the seven collisions, but if you notice in the collision diagram that they were all at Sunset at Durness, four of them, and then three were at California. So, or I'm sorry, Evanwood, and that one has been addressed already. So there weren't the collisions mid-block for speeding. So um, that was part of the recommendation. So mainly this is just making the um, speed limit more visible by doing the pavement legends. There's already existing 25 mile per hour signs. And then at California, we're going to refresh the yellow crosswalk um, with the ladder to make it more visible for students crossing. And then as we know, the red reflective strips beneath the stop signs is also a visibility issue at night. So when your headlights shine on the stop sign, it lights up. So, And then the cross traffic does not stop, just kind of as a reminder at California Street. So any other discussion? Should we, do we want to vote to take it to council? We are just an advisory, so we present the data and then we have a discussion and then if we all think that that's good enough, we send it forward to council and they make the final decision. So all those in favor of, of uh, approving? Aye. 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 Okay. So this one passes and it will go to council next. So then we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the traffic review at the intersection of Orange Avenue and Pacific Lane. Uh, so the city of Wescovina received a resident request to install flashing stop signs and other traffic control measures at the intersection of Orange Avenue and Pacific Lane to increase the visibility at this three-way stop controlled intersection. As part of this review, uh, we did a review of existing roadway conditions, three years of collision history, and peak hour counts were completed. And for the existing conditions on Orange Avenue, there is a posted speed limit of 35 miles per hour, and Orange Avenue intersects with Pacific Lane at a three-way stop-controlled T intersection. Orange Avenue is approximately 39.5 feet wide with one lane of travel in each direction and has a dashed yellow center line. Parking is allowed on the east-west sides of Orange Avenue except in places marked by red curb and on street sweeping days. There are no existing marked crosswalks at the stop-controlled T intersection of Orange Avenue and Pacific Lane. For the existing conditions for Pacific Lane, it has a prima facie speed of 25 miles per hour. It's approximately 39.5 feet wide with one lane of travel in each direction and has a dashed yellow center line. Parking is also allowed on the south and north sides of Pacific Lane, except in areas marked by red curb and on street sweeping days. Um, and for the collision history, a uh, review was done for uh, within 100 feet of the intersection of Orange Avenue and Pacific Lane over a three-year period between August of 2019 through July of 2022. And from this review, uh, we saw three collisions between the, those three years. And a uh, special note on this, one collision resulted in a pedestrian fatality, which occurred in 2019. It's noted that the collision resulted in a fatality of a uh, northbound left-turning vehicle struck a parked car and a pedestrian. As part of this review, we also did peak hour turning movement counts. Uh, so to determine the number of vehicles for each movement during the intersection peak hour, 
The counts were taken on January 13th, 2022, um, and it can be seen on the screen right there. Uh, the peak hour counts were taken between 7 and 9 a.m. and 4 and 6 p.m., and these were taken during typical commute times. From the review, the recommendations are to install an all-way plaque beneath existing stop signs, install red reflective strips beneath existing stop signs, repaint all stop pavement legends and stop bars, remove and replace existing stop bar and pavement legends, uh, trim the trees to allow for advanced sight distance, um, and have SPD to do spot enforcement at this location. And as part of this review, the resident did also request us to look into the lighting at the intersection. And as part of that, uh, uh, there is an existing street light on the northeast corner on the existing power pole. The illumination at this corner at night will need to be checked and if found to be deficient. Uh, the city will work with Edison to make sure that is addressed. Okay, and then also on this one, we found that the stop bar for the um, uh, Orange Avenue northbound direction, uh, it's, it was too far into the street, so it needs to be behind. So we're pulling it back about seven feet to the south of the original placement so that it's even with the, uh, the ramp and stuff on the other side. And then, so we'd have to sandblast the stop and stop bar and then um, put the new stop and stop bar seven feet south of the original placement i'm sorry which street is this we're talking about on Pacific orange. Or on orange yeah number seven address we're well, not seven that's if you look at the diagram on figure six talking about for northbound right yeah i think it's northbound <laughs> we don't have our north arrow on there when you're looking at that diagram, north is yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's facing up. Yeah, so um, if you look at the uh, figure six on the report, you can see this too. yeah, mm -hmm. the stop bar is way up. Yeah. This one was yeah, too Nothing close. Right so we're pushing it mm -hmm. back further. Um, this one does have a fatality, but it was a it was an unusual one. Where a car, I mean, it's unfortunate, it's horrible. The car hit a ped, but it wasn't as a result of running the stop sign. They hit a parked car. It was just turning unsafely. Right. So I know we have put some of the flashing stop signs in recently, but it's mainly those that it's found that we um, have a, a history of running the stop signs and a high collision pattern as well. So at this time, this one didn't meet that, so we're just adding um, additional measures to make the intersection more visible. And plus, there's some trees that are hanging over, and so it decreases the sight distance as you approach. So we're going to have maintenance um, look at trimming the trees as well. Any other discussion? I think that house where the number one and two are located also puts up, like at night, they have like, these bright lights to basically light the uh, intersection. Like kind of like warning lights. I don't know, like, I think because they're that's, guys. That's where the street light is at, right? Yeah. Right in front of your house on mm -hmm. that pole. They have like, from, if, from what I remember at least, they had like a yellow flashing light or something. Uh, well, when we go out at night to check the visibility of that street light, then we'll see what's going on. Um, Edison maintains the street lights, so we'll have to work with them and see if they can, um, you know, what the illumination is at night. Could be that they are also afraid someone is going to run the stop and just go straight. I think, I, I, I'm not sure, but I think that has happened before, and that's why they did it. Mm. But I have not confirmed that. I mean, the original request wanted flashing stop signs. Um, With that house flashing and the stoplight or stop signs flashing, I think that would be problematic. Yeah. So, do we stick with the original recommendations? I or? think these are step by step measures that you take. So, you uh, 
implement it, and then you measure its effectiveness. And if it's something that needs to be done afterwards, we can always complement it. Right. That's so kind I'll, of like our phase one, then we have our phase two measures. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's have a vote then. All those in favor of taking it to council? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, then we'll move on to our third item of uh, new traffic committee items and our last, which is going to be the traffic review of South Morganfield Avenue from East Hollandworth Street to P East Pine Falls Drive. Right there. Uh, so the city received a resident request to evaluate, evaluate existing conditions along the segment of Morganfield Avenue between Hollingworth Street and Pine Falls Drive. The resident reported that vehicles tend to speed through this area, causing concern due to the proximity of Hollingworth Elementary School. Uh, the resident requested for the city to evaluate the potential installation of speed humps or other traffic calming measures to slow traffic. As part of this review, uh, we included an analysis of existing roadway conditions, a review of approximately three years of available traffic collision data, an average daily traffic count, or ADT, and a 24-hour speed survey. So for the existing conditions on South Morganfield Avenue, uh, it has a posted speed limit of 25 miles per hour. Uh, South Morganfield Avenue intersects with East Hollingworth Street at a four-way stop-controlled intersection where white standard crosswalks are marked on all four legs of the intersection. South Morgan Avenue intersects with East Pine Falls Drive at a three-way stop-controlled T intersection with no marked crosswalks. Uh, South Morganfield Avenue is approximately 39.5 feet wide with one lane of travel in each direction with a dash yellow center line. Morganfield Avenue south of Hollingworth Street has a 30 mile per hour posted speed limit as well. For East Hollingworth Street, it has a prima facie speed of 25 miles per hour and is approximately 39.5 feet wide with one lane of travel in each direction and no marked center line. East Hollingworth Street travels along Hollingworth Elementary School and intersects with South Morganfield Avenue approximately 500 feet to the east of the school. East Pine Falls Drive has a prima facie speed of 25 miles per hour and is approximately 31.5 feet wide with one lane of travel in each direction and no marked center line. So for the collision investigation for this report, a uh, review was done for any collisions within 100 feet of the segment of Morganfield Avenue between Hollingworth Street and Pine Falls Drive and was conducted over a three year period between August 2019 through July of 2022. Based on this analysis, we found one collision within this segment. Let's see. We additionally did an ADT count on June 1st of 2022. And uh, during this ADT count, we found that uh, Morganfield Avenue carries a total of 713 vehicles per day. And we additionally did a 24-hour speed, speed survey, which was also done on June 1st of 2022. Based on the speed survey, the 85th percentile speed of vehicles surveyed along Morganfield Avenue was determined to be 34 miles per hour. It was noted during the speed survey that most of the vehicles uh, traveling more than 25 miles per hour were documented between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. So the resident did initially request for a speed hump evaluation. Um, and to be considered for a speed hump, the street must be considered a local road per the California uh, road systems by Caltrans. Morganfield Avenue is designated as a major collector road by the California road system by Caltrans. Morganfield Avenue also is on an incline, which does not meet the requirements for speed hump evaluations. So from the report, the recommendations are to install an all way plaque beneath the existing stop signs, install a 25 mile per hour speed limit sign, Trim trees block blocking any signs along the segment. Add red reflective posts on all stop signs. And remove existing crosswalks and repaint the crosswalks in yellow ladder paint. At Morganfield and Hollywood. Okay. Because it is within the um, CBC guidelines. It's, it's only 500 feet from an elementary school. So we're going to repaint those crosswalks in ladder yellow. Currently, it's white standard. So basically, this this street also has the um, 
the posted speed limit sign going the one direction, the um, westbound. But it's inside, a, or maybe that's the eastbound, is inside a Never mind. I got to put my north arrow correctly here. Okay, so the speed limit signs need to be checked because some of them are inside um, trees, so it's blocking them. And I see it's the southbound one that we indicate that's the one we need to trim the trees. So then we're also going to put the pavement legends so that if a sign is blocked by a tree, we still have the pavement legend denoting it. And um, add the reflective posts and the all-way plaque at the Hollingsworth location. Um, is there any other? And Pine Falls, so that at night they can see it more. I know the resident wanted speed humps, but this is not a, it's, a, a, it's on a downhill and it has a slight curve, so it's not one that we would put the speed humps on. Any uh, comment, discussion? Shall we vote then? Pretty to... straightforward, yeah, that's the story. Okay. In favor, say aye. 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 Okay, this one will also go to council. Item number four, I guess, right? Okay, we do have some residents present. And do you each want to speak, or you have a, a certain one that? <laughs> well, we're husband and wife. Okay. Sally Murphy. Michael Murphy. <laughs> nice and to meet you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for, and for allowing us to crash your meeting. Oh, here. anytime. That's what it's for. But, um, we have a few items that I feel like it needs to be brought out to the city for all of your evaluation. And this is something that has been it's getting worse worse in the last five years to now. And we just thought that, you know, it would eventually get better, but it has not been the case. Um, starting from most in summers, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sundays, we have in the evenings um, speeding and exceeding um, dangerous um, speeds that we live on our our home is on the north side of Cameron and Hollenbeck is the nearest intersection and so we're kind of on a down slope is it, if I'm hearing you guys correctly <laughs> describing certain streets trying to figure that and so um, we have um, had many incidents on Hollenbeck and Cameron. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that inter intersection. Uh, because since we've been there since two, 2007, or 1995, sorry. Um, uh, we've seen a lot in that intersection. When we first moved in, it was a stop sign. Now, in years later, changing to a light, uh, reducing it by one, removing one lane and tur turning it into um, like one, yeah, once a turn That's lane, and it, turn, and it just kind of, we're the third home uh, from the intersection on the right and the right hand side going, going, west. going west. So we see a lot of cars that are coming downhill that are just speeding. And now with this new trend of racing, is our, our street has turned into a racetrack. Is and that Cameron or Hollenbeck? Cameron. Okay. Cameron. And very dangerous. Um, where I turn to come into my home, I turn on right on Mount Hollenbeck and I'm turning right onto Cameron. And since I'm the third home on the right, I'm slowing down to go into my driveway. You have uh, people who are speeding coming down that are just honking and just, uh, and, and there's been close calls where I see in the rear view mirror that I'm thinking, Oh boy, somebody's going to hit me. And so um, that is uh, one aspect of it that I um, experienced. Another one is um, we have Vine Elementary School, um, one street up on Vine Street. And then we have Hollenbeck Middle School. 
and a lot of those children end up coming on Hollenbeck, crossing uh, Cameron on Hollenbeck down that street. That uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, go ahead. Oh, I'm just asking so if can get it on the oh, yeah, okay, Google perfect. Maps so we can yeah, look at it. Yeah. 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 Yes, and so when you have children crossing the street and you have these people yeah. racing down, I'm just holding my breath sometimes that I, I, I don't know what's going to happen. So um, I've been thinking about, I was one of those people that tweeted <laughs> in the past about traffic to the city of, and, and tagged the city of West Covina. And, and, and just saying, needing more more um, uh, units to, especially when the children are getting out of, we don't have children, school age children anymore, but uh, when they were in school, I would walk them up and down, and it wasn't as bad as it is now. Um, but I see a lot of close calls that I know somebody, a child, is going to get hurt. And this is very concerning. So, I mean, as you, as you go down, as you're traveling west on Cameron coming down, uh, people don't realize um, the light satellite. starts to turn yellow. Um, it's in the corner. They feel they're you know, much further away from the light than they really are. And they're already going fast. And then they realize, uh-oh, uh, it's going to be too late for me to stop. And they continue to go through it. That's why there's always been so many accidents on Cameron and Hollenbeck. But they'll just buzz through it, or they'll hit their nitro button, and we can hear the boom, boom, where their nitros go flying out. And even the motorcycles are still doing the kind of the same thing. But yeah, it's come close. You know, the kids see the green. You know, they start to walk, and you know, we'll be outside or something, and we see these guys just flying down. We're like, oh, Nikes. You know, it gets kind of. Oops, that was dicey. Um, so, yeah, I think because they go downhill, they don't realize they're much further away from the light than they really are. And, yeah, so these guys are just racing up. So, I'm sorry, how wide is the street again? One lane in each direction? So, or? So it's like two, two lanes. lanes. It's two, two lanes. lanes. Two yeah, lanes. and then there's a, if you're traveling yeah, eastbound, DUI. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, there, we go. there you go. Turn. Thank you. There you go. Yes. And still cars could park. There's enough room for. Yeah. Parking, so it's yeah. Yeah, it's just a little bit of a ways, but as you're as actually as you're traveling westbound on Cameron coming down, and that two lanes kind of moves a little bit to the left because you don't have parking within the first two homes that are there, and um, a lot of times the the people are really close, and we're the third house, like. My wife had said on the north hand side, I guess it would be yes. toward the freeway. The and, northwest intersect uh, corner. And they just yes. they just come down and they're just right on us. And again, we look in our rearview mirror and I'm like, oh God, we're going to get hit. And luckily we don't. Um, but yeah, I mean. So I don't know if there's any, um, um, I guess, code for. Uh, these mufflers. I know a lot of these kids are changing their mufflers to these extremely loud and uh, mufflers. So you have this noise. Our, our bedroom window is facing the street. So we have this like all night, Fridays, Saturdays, not so much Sunday, sometimes if it's a long weekend. But, um, you know, like I said, it starts. Thursday, definitely Friday, Saturdays, and they, they're just racing. These kids are racing, and I try, I mean, we have cameras, and I think, you know, we've looked at our cameras, and our cameras can't even capture the cars because they just go so fast. So the other thing that we notice is that increase of um, traffic whenever there is a backed up, back up on the 10 freeway. Our street is the outlet to everything from the freeway that goes up and down. I guess that's okay, that's a given because that's what happens in a city that is close to a freeway. But, you know, when they're not following the traffic, you know, rules of our community, then it concerns me, especially when I see, again, going back to children getting out of school. 
And so um, I just felt that I needed to come in and, and share that for our safety, but our community safety. That's just um, you know, what we're what we're here. So. And I had one other little tidbit. I know you guys just put in a, a traffic light on Maranka and Cameron. So uh, anywhere from 7 o'clock till 10, 11 o'clock, you have a red arrow. Okay. Yes. Now, I'm sorry, but we have been working on that, okay. and it you will can't change. Turn right yes. On a red arrow. You, and then we went back, and the person, the, peop, the company that designed it has revised their plans. And now we're working, we have to go through county, I believe, and they're going to change it so that it's a green arrow. Well, and, you, you know, right, right. So, right so they're changing that. So the city is aware of that issue. The police have, have told us. So we've gone back and, and fixed the plans. And the, the company that designed that intersection fix the timing and everything, but now we just ha are waiting to implement it. They have to change out one of the bulbs to the one that has the red arrow. So, yes. Yeah, <laughs> That's I'm the only reason, I, yeah. I feel stupid <laughs> at 9.30, 10 o'clock at night, sitting waiting. in the right yes. turn lane. There's absolutely no traffic around. And my luck, I would say, okay, I'm going to turn, and then there's... <laughs> ED sitting yes. at the high school right there. Waiting, yes. I want to see who's going to turn so I can flip on the lights and get somebody or something like that. But uh, yeah, so that was that was my thing. Is you just sit there. Yes, and, that and is being addressed. So um, as soon as we get the timing, guys have to go in and change mm -hmm. the timing, sign off on it. Then we're going to make that change. Okay, and just I just had a thought while you guys were mentioning mm -hmm. street cleaning. Since you know our street, when is street cleaning? Street sweeping? Yeah. On Cameron? On Cameron and, like I said, we're Cameron and Holland. Yeah. And I don't think I've ever seen I don't know that I've ever seen a sweeper. Sweeper. Do you yeah. have signs There's that no say, sign on it. There's we'll no, see. Like, no parking at this yeah. time for street sweeping. Yeah. Right. I've never well, seen it. the city now, right now, has in their municipal code that each residential street can choose whether they move their cars during the street sweeping. So you'll notice that some streets have street sweeping signs, no parking on Friday, blah, 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 and some do not. So the city right now is reevaluating all the parking issues, the street sweeping, the overnight, the permit parking, all that. And so then they're going to revise that and I'm sure they're going to have some community meetings based on the community input, what they want. And um, so that is coming. But you can contact us here, um, and we can tell you what day it's supposed to be. I don't have, we, they yeah, have a map. And although yeah. there's homes there, most everybody has garage, and mm -hmm. they don't use it for storage. They actually do put cars in it. But um, there's no signs anywhere for street sweeping and this and that. I do notice on other streets that street sweep, sweeping, no parking yes. at this time. <laughs> I can see that. We don't park on the street. We definitely don't park on the street because we're too close. Um, but I was like, okay, well, there's not a lot of cars on the street, but I wonder when they actually go by. So maybe none of your residents um, put a request in to have everybody off the street. So. It's kind of an unusual thing. We don't, we don't thing know. That, like I said, I yeah. do street sweep. I'm like, oh, there's street sweeping? It's on a gun. I've never seen it. Yes, so if you don't nobody. have it posted and elect to have no parking, then the sweep sweeper kind of goes around all the park cars. Got it. So. Yeah, there's not, there's. Yeah, we'd have to look and see what day sweeping is on your street. Yeah, so if you want to contact engineering or you can talk. We have a sign sheet, right? Yeah, we have a sign sheet. You have the oh, yeah, information there and we'll call you back. Two, you have Here it is. Yeah. 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 We'll, 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 call, we'll find meeting. out and call okay. you back. We don't have to call. We'll get back yeah. to you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. But I think Janice did it very well. The city's looking at evaluating a couple issues all regarding parking. Yeah, yeah, I just... So the last bit on my... I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. Sorry. On, on, my, on my street, I noticed that there's these um, solar um, monitors for speed that mm -hmm. are up oh. 
on um, Cameron, up. and I notice people tend to slow down when they come. Oh, I think good. they work. That's speed what they're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the no, speed they, I feedback. Think they yeah. work because I notice that, and I take my walks up and down Cameron as well. So, um, but there's not a whole lot closer to our our area. Our thought was. And, and we're more of an incline. Yeah. And so because they put one on the, uh, on the upslope, on the upslope going up Cameron, mm -hmm. going toward nothing. Grand and going toward Citrus and everywhere, but on the bottom part, I think that's really, because we do, we see a lot of people slow down and we think that's, I mean, I think that's really good. Oh, wow, so yeah, everybody backs off and I'm like, yeah, those things really do work. And, but I, maybe that might help to let people know you're going much faster than you or we'll leave it to the experts. Right. Especially the ones that flash at you, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no, we thought those work really well. And I like the stop signs that have the flashing lights on them and stuff like that, because sometimes at night it was yes. really hard to see that. And mm. I know you guys have done nice, nice reflective stuff right. on the roads. I like that, because you can kind of helps. Some people wear dark clothes at night. Oh, yeah. But when they pass over <laughs> the reflector, you can kind of see a movement a little bit better. So. So we have another pack of, I think, 17 locations that are going to be installed soon. I mean, it's going through the process. Everything takes a process, you know? So hopefully we'll have some more items that are coming out. And then the city also got um, grant funds to do um, 10 signalized intersections we're improving. And I can't remember if Cameron and Hollenbeck is one of those. I should have brought my list. but. So we that, feel that's kind of interesting, on yeah. On the corner. corner, because he has to replace his fence. post and uh, his wrought iron fence. So many times. All the time. And, oh, well, I'm not there. But yeah. Anyway, thanks for, Thank you for listening. hearing us out. And we will um, look into it. And um, mm -hmm. thank you for coming and discussing. And like I said, we're just an advisory, but we do do the base data. And then um, council kind of does the approval and gets that part going. And then Officer um, Seichner, he took notes, so um, I'm sure he can, and his his crew will be out. And, Love uh, them out there. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, Doing some spot we enforcement like, oh, and all, yes. Thank you. We're like, where are they now? We're growing out loud. Is um, okay. so there any idea with the, with the light? Because like I said, I kind of get stupid sometimes, and I, I do want to go through it. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry <laughs> if you pull me over, I guess. Um, all right. But is it yeah. like once a week? Yeah. No, no. It, it's coming soon. We just have to get, you know, when you do signals, you have timing. It's different people, and the engineer who did the timing has to sign off on it because it's now his baby. <laughs> the timing is a very liability stuff. So okay. we've got all the plans in, so now we're just to the cabinet part. So we have to, um, I believe, um, we have to find out who does the timing, who signed it, because we have to get them to change it. Okay. So um, it's close, because we do know there is an issue, so I would think within you know, a couple weeks. Yeah. I think we have to work with us on the government and Edison too, because I know what mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so there's some coordination that needs to occur, but a month, no. Yeah, no, no because we, we, yeah, we jumped on it real quick because we do know that there was an issue, so we're trying to fix that so that, you know, cars can wait, do the usual red on red, so. <laughs> well, again, thank you for thank you. Well, thank you. Come anytime. Here. We're, here. we're here each month, so. Okay. <laughs> once a month? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The second okay. Tuesday of every month, this room, unless we ha we know we're having a big crowd on something, um, at three o'clock. So, all right. Conclusion. Yeah. Yes. Then uh, next item. Are there any committee members that have any items? No, thank you. No. Nope. Then I'll go ahead and adjourn this meeting. Our next meeting will be in November.